On June the 25th, 1876, an elated George Armstrong Custer announced to his eager men as they rode into sight of the village of their elusive Indian foes along the Little Bighorn River, we've caught them napping. But who was really caught napping? According to historians such as Edgar Stewart, the Indians were not at all surprised at the appearance of Custer's command. They had known for days the approximate location of the regiment. Despite the fact that the regiment marched in several columns, the dust kicked up by the horses rose in enormous clouds, which were visible for miles. In his book, Custer's Luck, Stewart writes, the Indians knew the location of the regiment from the smoke ascending from Custer's campfires, about 10 miles off. Smoke which made Custer's Crow scouts very angry and caused them to question the judgment of the white leaders who seemed to operate under the principle that the Sioux were blind. Flatiron, one of the Cheyenne chiefs, later went so far as to declare that plans for the entrapment of Custer and his men had been worked out at a council the night before the battle. The Indians saw Custer's five companies riding along the bluffs toward the lower end of the camp and knew they were seeking a ravine or coulee by which they could descend from the bluffs to the river, cross, and attack the village. They also knew just how far Custer would have to go before reaching the ravine, which would take him down to the river and they could calculate almost to the moment just how long it would take him to reach it. Thus plans to meet the attack could be made with deliberation and without undue haste. In his book, Crazy Horse and Custer, The Parallel Lives of Two American Warriors, Stephen Ambrose writes, the hostiles knew all about Custer, but failed to see Reno breaking off. Thus, Reno was the real surprise. Despite the surprise, everything went according to plan. Reno was pinned down. When Custer tried to cross the river, he was blocked. As Custer pivoted further to the right, Crazy Horse outflanked him, seizing the high ground. Custer was caught in a pincer movement between the Indians coming up from the river and those holding the high ground. In 20 minutes, perhaps less, it was over. In Son of the Morning Star, Evan Connell reports, the Sioux warrior Gall said that the Custer fight took about half an hour. The blue coats were dismounted, he said, when the Indians rode over them. Even if they had been mounted, it would not have lasted much longer because the American horses were tired and hungry. They were so hungry that they ate grass during the battle. According to Two Moons, a Cheyenne chief, the battle was over in as long as it takes for a hungry man to eat his dinner.